Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, sorry for this pause and the wrong format of the slides. I think it happens sometimes. And uh, soon enough, you'll see that it's not the only fault here. So, uh, what is Lua, what is Lua JIT, and why it might be interesting or it is interesting to port uh, one to the other one. First, a few words about myself, and as you've already seen, I'm not really a software developer, so I know not so much about the software and spent last quarter century developing hardware where the software is usually runs on. And here uh, it was a different systems, embedded systems and system. Now it's system on modulus and most of them are FPGA or SOC FPGA based systems on modulus. Uh, and yes, I can write some code on VHDL, but it's again not a software. It's more a description of the low level hardware. And uh, usual problems I have with the software is not how to develop the software itself, but how to make the software run on the hardware, and not just on the new hardware, but on the hardware which is not known to be working yet. And recent development, new architectures and soft core CPUs running on the FPGA are not making my life any easier, because now I'm not only, uh, I'm not, only uh, not sure that uh, some part of the hardware not working, but I can be sure that the CPU is also maybe not quite working right. Uh, so this uh, talk is about the uh, initiative project to port the uh, Lua and specifically Lua JIT implementation to the RISC-V architecture. But uh, for me, as I said, it's not interesting by itself, but to apply it to so for the problems uh, with the early hardware bring up and uh, with uh, diagnostic and debugging this hardware. Uh, unfortunately, this project at the, oh, fortunately for me, it's the very early stage and it's uh, not so many people involved in it. So please don't be disapp disappointed by the end of this talk that nothing is available and nothing is working. It's more an uh, lightning talk, why it might be interesting, what approaches to be take, what benefits we will get if and ever it's done. Uh, probably in this development room nobody is interested to uh, listen once again why RISC-V is good, why we should use it or anything should be ported to it. Uh, for the application of the hardware development, it's, uh, and especially for the soft CPUs, RISC-V is good because it's free and because it has uh, modular and extensible approaches. So it's possible to take the core CPU, run some basic software, if the CPU is, uh, or soft core CPU is good enough and is running and the software in the state to bring up this non-working hardware and non-working CPU. And then you can build upon this uh, solid foundation and to add some extensions both to your hardware infrastructure and to the CPU itself. Because uh, ISA instruction set architecture reserved some space for the custom instructions and for the custom extensions of the CPU architecture. Um, and uh, why it's also important, uh, there are already several hardware products from the company I'm working for at the moment, which uh, do utilize the soft core RISC CPU processors running on the FPGA SOMS. And uh, later this year, the SOC FPGA with RISC V cores and uh, system on module uh, hardware based on this chip are going to be available, so we need some tools, we need some software to debug it, to demonstrate its operation, to test it in production. Okay, while lower, uh, 20 or 30 years ago to bring the uh, in hardware for initial prototype hardware, I've been uh, to exercise the hardware and test it, I've been pretty much happy to uh, using the uh, fourth language. It's small, compact, easy portable to the uh, new platforms, and it provides you an uh, interactive tool to probe all the registers, to fiddle with your hardware, to see what actually is going wrong with it or going right with it. Uh, 
Nowadays, I think not so many people are writing any fourth, um, even less are using it in production environment. But uh, there seems to be a better also kind of niche uh, alternative to that, that it's a Lua language. It's uh, very small and compact, and it provides you an interactive environment where you can define your functions, you can touch uh, all the uh, pieces of your hardware. Since it's very compact POSIX uh, C, uh, plain C code, it's very easy to port to the new architecture. It provides an uh, interface to uh, C language, so if you can uh, access uh, some parts of your hardware in C, just map some registers and touch them, then it's equally well and easy to be done from Lua from your interactive shell. And uh, uh, yeah, compare, uh, according to the interpreter language bench benchmarks, Lua, I think, one of the uh, two on the top, if not the fastest one. But uh, usually for those applications, it's not really uh, critical. In it, anyway, you are typing on the keyboard much slower. And this approach with using Lua to bring up hardware and to debug it has been first tried by myself um, something like well, already eight years ago to bring up uh, the, uh, and test the high-speed serial transceivers. But then it was a nice CPU, uh, proprietary Intel, Al back then Altera, and definitely it's much, it would be much more interesting and sensible now to do it on the RISC-V platform, just not to be connected to this particular hardware and particular FPGA vendor. Why Lua JIT? Uh, Lua JIT is an uh, implementation of the Lua language with the uh, just-in-time compiler, very efficient, compact, fast, even faster than the Lua itself. Uh, but uh, for me, the most uh, attractive, if the, not the only uh, most, uh, most attractive or single reason to try it, was that LuaJIT uh, it by itself includes a dynamic assembler. Uh, and that allow, allows to experiment not only with something connected externally to the CPU block, but uh, allows you interactively experiment with what is inside the CPU to add some new instructions and so on. Of course, it's, and for any real software developer, it would be uh, probably much easier to add support for new assembler instruction in their uh, binutils, LLVM, GCC, but all those things are way too heavy. And even if it would be uh, possible or if some software developer would be sitting next to me and doing that, it still would not be possible to experiment with those things interactively on the target. With the LuaJIT and its built-in dynamic assembler, it's possible to write a piece of code with new assembly instructions you've just introduced in your soft core CPU and try them out to experiment with them. Uh, also, in, uh, another second uh, order of importance uh, reasons uh, are that the uh, LuaJIT compiler Logit is used in several interesting projects in the software-defined radio, much smaller scale, but also interesting compared to the GNU radio, but uh, still an interesting one and provides somewhat more consistent and cleaner environment. Uh, let's say Lua is 10 times smaller than Python, so Lua radio is 10 times smaller than GNU radio, maybe 100 times smaller. But then it's faster, it's cleaner, and it gets you better chances to understand what's going on really there. Tarantul database have never ever tried it really, but what I read about it, it's a fast in-memory uh, database and apl Lua application server. So for some high-grade loaded sites and uh, enterprise level of applications. And also a nice compact Lua power distribution which includes the dynamic assembler not only for the C preprocessing but for Lua preprocessing. So it's just a compact uh, cross-platform Lua distribution also based on utilizing Lua JIT. And if as soon we have a uh, Lua JIT ported to the RISC-V, all those and many other platforms and applications making use of Lua JIT will be available or easily available. There are of course some downsides. Um, apparently this project is uh, 
not under active development, it's uh, prime. It, it used to be a mostly a single person development, Mike Powell. And uh, it looks like since 2017, he's not actively contributing to this project, but still taking some pictures. And there were recent uh, development of the ARM64 and MIP64 bit ports of Luajit. Uh, some of them were presented here on the first dam a few years ago, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, still, uh, the future may be uncertain as with any open source and free projects. Um, for the uh, uh, specific applications of the Luajit, it's not uncommon for the companies uh, to make forks and just to support their forks, not uh, to contribute to the mainstream. And uh, it both go good and bad according to the MIT license. The Lu and Luajit code is under so. And it's somewhat lacking behind the uh, uh, mainstream Lua development, which is now it's the version 5.3. Uh, Lua JIT is stick to 5.1, but it's not the only Lua-based project stick to this version, so maybe, maybe not. What is Lua JIT uh, itself consists of? As I said, the most attractive part for myself is the dynamic assembler. It's an... Uh, Actually, it's a preprocessor written in Lua itself, which takes a mixture of uh, C and assembled code and generate plain C code, which when compiled and executed, generates a binary. So it's a kind of a two or three step cross compiling environment and it allows uh, an easy dynamic uh, uh, relocation of those steps either to cross compile environment or to the target. And uh, the uh, Lua power distribution, uh, Lua gene distribution, Lua power I've mentioned earlier, provides the same preprocessing not only for the C code, but for the Lua code itself. So you write the mixture of Lua and assembly, your target assembly code, uh, preprocess it with dynamic assembler, you get the uh, uh, C or Lua executable. For C, you compile it and run it. For Lua, you just run it on the interpreter, either on target or on your cross-development host, and you get the binary for your target architecture. And with Lua, it's possible to run it, all this flow on the target itself. Uh, then the uh, virtual, Lua virtual machine, which is uh, compatible, the binary compatible by uh, application binary interface and bytecode compatible with the standard Lua virtual machine, but it's uh, highly optimized and written on the hand optimized assembler and compiled with the dynamic assembler. And then there is a tra tracing JIT compiler, uh, of course, dynamic memory management and collect uh, garbage collector. And uh, there are various extension models, which are a foreign function interface. The uh, ABI for the calling the C functions is the same for the standard Lua and Lua JIT. Uh, binary bit operations, uh, which are now a part of Lua 5.3, 5 but initially they were uh, introduced by the Lua JIT itself. And, uh, of course, there is a floating point support. Lua itself supports only a single type of uh, the uh, number, and it's a floating point. But uh, for most uh, embedded MCU, applica MCU class applications or embedded controller applications, uh, you can skip all the floating point altogether and make your life much, much easier. Uh, current status uh, is a very short and disappointing one. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Lua itself can be compiled and run on the, uh, both uh, on the uh, Spike simulator and on the uh, target hardware. I have run it on uh, several, I think, two or three different soft core CPUs on two different FPGAs family. So there is a solid base for tests and reference platform to compare with, uh, both in terms of the accuracy of implementation, correctness of the implementation, and in performance. Uh, Git repository fork uh, changes, uh, make file changes to support the new architecture and built environment. So just the basic uh, initial steps. Uh, then the Git repository contains the, uh, all the uh, instructions from the base 32-bit integer set. Not much more than that. Uh, it's just 48 instructions, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, 
access, uh, all the assembler, macro assembler stuff, uh, such as the registers, renaming and handling, uh, immediate uh, arguments and uh, labels, relocation handling is work in progress. So pretty much nothing is working. And uh, everything else, so I would say 95% of work is still in the long, long running to-do list. So if anybody is willing to join it and contribute to it, then you are more than welcome, either to fork it yourself or to send patches. Uh, as I said, the to-do list is much longer than the current status list, so what remains to be done is pretty much everything. No need to repeat that. But much more interesting where we go from here, when it's ready and when we have this basic core system is working. Uh, and those stuffs are really interesting. Unfortunately, we have to go through the porting and the laborious efforts before we there. Uh, RISC V uh, Foundation reserves the J extension specification for the uh, uh, G, uh, exactly for the JIT compiling languages. Oh. The question is uh, that what languages are currently heavily are he heavily using the uh, JIT compilation? Mm, the most heavyweight player, I would say, are Java and JavaScript. Um, not sure, maybe C sharp. And obviously, because behind those uh, languages, those environments, there are huge corporations with a lot of software, hardware developers, and some budget behind. Uh, definitely, they will try to shape this RISC-V J extension through the foundation, through their contribution. I'm pretty much sure that they're not aware of any efforts, but pretty much sure that there are efforts uh, to support JIT compilation on RISC-V for all those things. But uh, so the question is uh, who and in what direction will shape this J extension of RISC-V architecture when uh, foundation start to work on it. And uh, having a really smaller, li lightweight, uh, lower JIT implementation might be an interesting test bench and it would be great to have it before the extension itself is uh, specified. So we can see if and how it compares to it. Then, of course, because uh, we can change not only the hardware but the CPU itself and do it dynamically or almost dynamically, it would be interesting to experiment with the different hardware-assisted techniques for the JIT compilation to the detect hot traces because the low JIT compiler is uh, analyzing the execution thread of the vir virtual machine at runtime and compile the hot paths in this machine and JIT compile hot paths and uh, some execution counter, performance counters in the CPU may be helpful to provide this hardware assistance for the hot trace detection. Same goes for the uh, mm. Uh, memory management and garbage collection with the hardware assistance for it. Then the uh, thing which is really interesting is the, some custom and uh, target uh, application specific acceleration development. And in this case, uh, once again, the dynamic assembler would provide a very uh, comprehensive and useful uh, test and uh, evaluation test and prototype platform because you can just specify the new uh, assembler instruction on the interactively on the Lua level and have it immediately compiled uh, and have the binary code compiled in it uh, and directly on the target. So if not in production environment and when this, everything is committed to the silicon, but for the soft core CPUs and the interactive development and debugging of those functionality, that would be uh, really interesting. And since I've already mentioned that uh, 30 years ago, fourth was a language of choice for such experiments. There is nothing that would prevent to write another fourth on the assembler, or on the uh, dynamic assembler of LuaJIT. And then once we have an interactive fourth shell, it takes just uh, two or three screens to write a new assembler on this fourth. Uh, and it looks like I'm going in the loops now. <laughs> so uh, thank you for your attention, and if you have anything to contribute, any questions, please feel free to contact, to download, to scan. Yep. Thank you.
Mm. Yes, any questions? Assuming, well, first of all, hi, I'm Max. I'm working on the Raptorjet, uh, the another widget fork. And I'm wondering if you're aware of uh, what the other forks are doing at the moment. For example, um, in Raptorjet, something that we're working on right now, and that's I'm also going to talk about tomorrow, is we are porting the bytecode interpreter of LuaJIT that's written in assembly to C. We're almost done with that. Oh. So that would kind of like save you porting the. Uh, yes, but for the, uh, so the question was if I am aware of what the other LuaJIT forks are doing, uh, not really much aware of that. So I've seen that uh, RT, RK company, if I'm not mistaken the name, they are supporting uh, ports of LuaJIT to uh, MIPS 64-bit uh, and ARM V8 64-bit architectures. Uh, Taranto, uh, um, they are mostly targeted on optimizing the performance for their database application. So they, I think they are providing some functionality which improves the in-memory database handling and they've, do, they've done it directly in the Lua sheet. Uh, then there was some other one, but I, you can talk to me either tomorrow or yeah, later today. I can find the link there and on some publications. Lua Vella, if... Ah, okay. I'm not uh, going to elaborate about this one. I want to say thank you. It's a very nice talk about what yep. you Oh, thank you. Uh, just starting with that. And uh, porting the uh, virtual machine from the Luajit virtual machine to, from assembler to C, yes, of course, it, that would save a lot of porting in, uh, efforts. That would be much easier to port it. But then probably for the price of optimization and performance. Mm. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, specifically for the floating point, as far as I know, the logit is making use of uh, uh, non tagging uh, Not sure how and if it's supported in your port. So thank you. I think, yeah, I'm not only started late, but I finished late too. <laughs> Sorry about that. And I think it's in uh, break now. Yes. Oh, so something all of us are really needed. <laughs> Great, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.